Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Spar and Brawl. I hope you're having a decent day. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Sam, and this video is going to be on the Pandora Papers. This is our first look, so to speak, and it's going to be mainly led by Sam. But yeah, just bear that in mind. But yeah, the Pandora Papers, which reveal the inner workings of a shadow economy that benefits the wealthy and well-connected at the expense of everybody else, were released on Monday. The document and leaks were published by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, who obtained nearly 12 million confidential files and led a team of over 600 journalists from 150 news agencies who spent two years on this story. And I'm just going to read a short paragraph from the article that they posted on their own website, and it just highlights a little bit the relevance and puts, it, puts the leak in a broader context. The leaked records revealed that many of the power players who could help bring an end to the offshore system instead benefit from it, stashing assets in covert companies and trusts while the governments do little to slow a global stream of illicit money that enriches criminals and impoverishes nations. So yeah, Sam, that's just to give kind of an overview of the whole story and what's happened, really the basic, basic, basics. But why don't you give a quick rundown of what you have in store for us? today with this video sure yeah i mean to be fair you helped a lot with the research i'm just the one presenting it a bit more this time around but uh first we're gonna just cover the general of what happened in recent days and with this report coming out what it is put it in a bit of a context then we're gonna look at different regions um, around the world uh we're going to start regionally and then work our way sort of downwards uh, country-wise and the most important country because we are talking of over 11 million documents and so far I try to uh, watch as much as I can and read as much as I can uh, on the matter but uh, most of I believe documents are not still gone through by uh, uh, by your everyday journalist not the ma main team and uh, it's a fantastic piece of journalism uh, and it's very important. So we thought we'd talk about it. And it's actually, I think, quite fun to uh, learn uh, about the, like, I think that's how, like, mechanisms of power, how, how power and money works. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the, oh, oh, and at the end, I'm going to give a slight take of my own or, or of our own as far and brawl take slightly uh, but that's at the end so hopefully you can skip that very easily but uh, just to put everything into a context i'm sure uh, the picture of this has been put up by uh, a cameo but how uh, the bbc put up this great uh, uh, information this uh, basically uh, picture which infographic says, infographic mm -hmm. sorry how big is the pandora paper leak it includes 14 sources more than 11, 900,000 files. Am I saying that right? My math is terrible. And about three terabytes of data. And as somebody who has more than four terabytes of movies, uh, three terabytes of the paper, like document data, that's crazy. That's a crazy amount. So, uh, I mean, they broke it down, how many documents, images, emails, spreadsheets, others. The more interesting part, part I found was the uh, comparison to offshore leaks in 2013, which was only two and a half uh, million files. Panama Papers, 11 million uh, files. Uh, Paradise Papers, 13.4 million files. And this one, 11.9 million files. So it's not the biggest. Uh, Paradise Papers were bigger, uh, but in terms of terabyte size, and maybe in terms of importance, I think um, it's a, a bigger deal in many ways. And uh, it has already uh, set off all kinds of uh, responses from different governments uh, and all kinds of calls for investigations and all kinds of announcements of investigations, although I'm not sure if any concrete steps have been taken. And this comes at the heels of the, uh, there's a summit at the end of November, I, I believe G20 summit, where tax evasion and tax uh, havens are uh, 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 one of the centerpiece issues that are gonna be discussed. 
So that is the context in which this is coming out, which is quite interesting. Yeah, no, definitely. So now I think we can move on to more regional aspects and more. And as Camier pointed out, this is our first look, first take, because again, this is going to uh, you know, evolve uh, fast and uh, furiously, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, a lot of information came out in a single day because they had prepared it and just put everything out together. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So let's uh, start with West Asia, a region uh, close to my heart and a region where I'm very interested in, especially recently. Indian, the Indian Express, one of the Indian's major news outlets, was one of the outlets that was working with the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists in uh, producing, apparently. I don't know in producing or distributing. I, I couldn't really understand. I, I, from I, so I'm much guessing I going through the documents, probably. Oh, okay. Going I'm to, guessing, right? So, because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. But I don't know if they like they helped obtain i meant the obtain yeah. part that mm. that's i never quite understood the mechanisms there i would uh, assume yeah sorry go ahead no no they did a great video on uh, the on youtube which i highly recommend everybody check out uh, it's a slightly low production compared to some other videos we discussed but it's very detailed uh, and if you're i'm sure if you're interested in very internal politics of india there are a lot of names that i personally didn't know. But let me give you a, 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 this is a quote. Hundreds of wealthy Indians, including business people, figures in the figure in the Pandora Papers that has uncovered financial assets of rich individuals across the world. Many of the Indians have rejected allegations of misdoing. And that's a key uh, thing that I think we're going to talk about later on in our issues. The Pandora paper leak, leak of Trovo financial records in offshore tax haven has been obtained by the, uh, uh, by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. More than 300 Indian names are part of their list. Some of the more famous that I uh, personally don't know much about. So, so far I was looking, I couldn't find any specific names related to the, for example, powerful Nehru family or uh, the Mundi uh, BGP party, that type of thing. So, because that would be more interesting to me, if, especially if there are elections and stuff. But mostly it's, uh, apparently uh, there includes uh, celebrities, actresses, cricket players, uh, sports people, porn stars, that type of mm -hmm. thing, mostly in, in India and Pakistan, uh, this case. So that was a uh, new, that was uh, in India. More interestingly, well, at least more, it's got, it has garnered more international attention, is that the close family members of the uh, Prime Minister Emran Khan, as well as his financial minister and like not just his close family members, people who are in his close uh, political, what do you say? Uh, circle administration. Uh, circle. Team, yeah. Yes, circle administration. They have been, uh, their names have appeared in uh, pa uh, pa Pandora uh, papers. And, uh, you know, uh, today Emran Khan announced that he will, there will be, there will be an investigation into all the allegations and, I think that's it. I mean, I already said that we're going to discuss this in issues, but let me just give this as a teaser that a lot of things that have been revealed are not illegal or mm -hmm. are not clearly illegal as of yet. So keep that in mind. So he announced the investigation. This is uh, Emran Khan's case is slightly more interesting because... This is, again, I'm reading this as a quote. In 2018, Emran Khan, the Pakistani cricketing legend turned anti-corruption campaigner, finally broke through. After more than two decades in political wilderness, the charismatic Oxford-educated media star, who used to be, a, by the way, famous womanizer in UK before turning, uh, before becoming, becoming a Muslim born again, Born again Muslim? I don't know how, <laughs> what's that. Uh, start seized on the publication of Panama Papers. Mm -hmm. in, in the 2016 journalistic expose that revealed the offshore secrets of the global elites. Among the findings, the children of Pakistani sitting prime minister secretly 
own the string of luxury London apartment. That is referring to, I believe, uh, Nawaz Sharif, who was the Islamist parties, but the traditional Islamist parties political leader at the time after Parviz Musharraf's long years of uh, dictatorial, military dictatorial rule. So Emran Khan is coming, uh, obviously, under a lot of attack because uh, the fact that he came uh, to power, basically, as an anti-corruption politician, very much on a very similar sort of uh, basis. Any questions about uh, India? No, but Pakistan, I guess, Indian? so in Pakistan, it's kind of more of a high profile, more um, uh, important person got kind of caught in this. Because you were saying that Mori and all the Modi, sorry, in India. So again, I, I this is a first look. I really want to emphasize that. Yeah. And a lot of I, as I mean, the whole thing, we get to this in the issues. A lot of this is done through corporate shells and that type of thing. But yeah, journalistically or media wise, that has garnered far more attention, I believe. And uh, yeah, Emran Khan had to come out and announce an investigation into the matter. So, you know, I, I would think for now, at least yeah. Pakistan has been more, yeah, hit by this. All right. And I mean, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna keep on talking about this and go through all the countries. But yeah, there are one or two countries that seem like they haven't been hit as strong by this. Yeah, as strong. Which I find very strange. And I'm, yeah, I, I would imagine as time goes by, things change, but maybe and the fact that you have keep that in mind so far western oriented ma- media not western media but in the, the indian express is a offshoot of the uh, day i believe daily express and, you know there are traditions that shared here so uh, mm-hmm. as probably chinese media or russian media gets hold of this things narratives yeah. will change probably all right let's go further towards further west asia mm-hmm. Uh, we get to, this was something that was mostly highlighted in um, UK uh, and Anglosphere, I would say, which was the Jordanian um, uh, the king's uh, f- 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 assets in UK and in British Virgin Islands and in Brit- other uh, uh, across the world. So King, uh, I believe it's called, uh, sorry, uh, King Abdullah. Yeah, I believe it's called King Abdullah. I have a soft spot for somewhat as a corrupt leader in Middle East. He's been one of the more moderate corrupt leaders. Famously, he appeared on an episode of Star Trek. Uh, he, I mean, sad, I think he tries to emulate the old Iranian Shah, but mm. sadly, he's far too corrupt to, uh, you know, he's just way too, like he's, uh, not that Shah wasn't corrupt, it's just his country is suffering from energy shortages right now, Islamist parliamentarian are on the rise, so this could be hugely damaging to them. But he's been uh, buying uh, major uh, properties in Malibu, uh, in uh, eight, eight, eight properties in London, uh, Washington, uh, some in Washington, D.C., some in southeast uh, UK. Southeast UK is the, you know, is the Riviera of UK. Like mm-hmm. it's the best part of UK, basically. Uh, some of it includes, uh, all right. Uh, so he's come under a lot of criticism and the angle that the UK media is going besides the right-wing media, which is very personal and uh, brutal in their attack, is how easy it is to set up financial uh, uh, shells that would uh, buy up property in the UK and property prices, property rent is a major issue that uh, normal people, everyday people are dealing with. So it's hitting home hard. At the same time, and uh, another person who, uh, one of the people we've talked about a lot, but not in this regard, Mr. Ali, of the president of the Azerbaijan, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's financial uh, wrongdoings or activities uh, was very much revealed in Panama Papers as well. He, his daughters, his, uh, uh, his son, who's a minor at the time, I think he was four in, during Panama Papers, had major assets across the world. Now it turns out he's one of his sons. I don't know if it's the same son. Uh, hey, Dar has a 11-year-old son, has a 33 million pound 
property in the center of London. <laughs> uh, you got to start I young. <laughs> yeah, well, wow, well done. Then. Uh, I mean, I'm sure he's his hard work well. is paid off. Uh, I mean, in a more general sense, the papers show that Mr. Ali of his family and his associates uh, have uh, have. I don't quite. I think what is meant here is that have dealt more than 400 million pounds in property, mm -hmm. not necessarily bought, but I think it means ha has exchanged. I, I can't be sure of that. Uh, sorry, I'm taking a screenshots of something, so I don't have the broader context to clarify for myself. Gotcha. So yeah, anyways, um, let me get some more information uh, about, the... all right, no, we are done with, we, uh, so more generally speaking, UAE ha has come under a lot of uh, a lot of these uh, papers uh, relate to UAE um, and that type of place, Singapore and other tax haven. It's not in West Asia, but, you know, uh, that type of thing. And uh, so, you know, these type of countries that are sort of viewed as sort of city state tax havens are also coming under fire. But these were more specific cases that were looked at. Uh, that I try to highlight so far. So, shall we move on? Yeah, yeah, continue. Okay, very briefly, very briefly, as I mentioned, Singapore came under fire. Also, there are two Indonesian officials and a number of uh, Indonesian businessmen that uh, whose name uh, 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 has been mentioned in Pandora Papers, Erlanga Luhut, uh, I believe are, are, are the name of these officials. They've uh, promised to respond. Again, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these are not illegal. A lot yeah. of these are not clear if they are illegal or not, right? So keep that in mind. And a lot, uh, you know, I, I'm talking about possibly majority of those, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, very much keep that in mind. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. But I... I, I mean, couldn't find much. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the problem isn't necessarily even being judged on its legality, like necessarily speaking. I mean, people are aware that there are loopholes and everything, and just because it's legal and you can make it happen. Yeah, I think it's more of, you no, know, that's what I want to make clear, though, that if you want to make a moral ju judgment or yeah. ethical judgment, it's different from a legal judgment. Yeah. And in our take, I explain how would that affect i think how should that affect us and and even but, continue now i was just no, going to say the, the, east, yeah on east asia i just wanted to say that there i couldn't find much and i would be glad if anybody can uh, direct us towards more information but on east asia so far indonesia malaysia these type of countries where there is a lot of like indonesia is famous for one of the most probably one of the highest levels of uh, international corruption out there so i would be uh, i couldn't find anything yet that's all yeah yeah and i mean it, it's the beginning i know there's some stuff on thailand but i haven't also looked into it much and you're perhaps right that because depending on who were the journalists and the organizations who were part of the 150 who worked on these leaks only like the stories that they've looked into would have been ready to go yesterday everybody else I'm guessing I'm, I'm, other journalists just look, found out about this on Monday as well. I'm I'm guessing if I'm following the story correctly here. And this is not to say I'm not genuinely. Uh, this is not to say that they are biased in a way of conspiratorial bias. But no, if no. you work for Daily Express, you you don't have the same values as somebody who works at Communist Daily, right? So that's gonna have, or if you work at RT, whatever. So, you know, that's going to affect more the, the names you focus on, the, you know, the trends yeah. you focus on. And more simply, your editors and boss will be interested with things that have to do with their, with their country. So I th I they'll think be like, the, in the get selection these... process, it's more yeah. to do with selection process than people actually thinking what their boss wants. Because... No, no, but knowing, no, I mean, knowing, I mean, if, if you're media based in the uk you first want to dig out everything that there is oh on the you're UK. okay yeah yeah and what your audience wants yes, yeah yes, what's on right the uk here. then and get to the other countries and, and, and what's everything interesting yeah. to you 
No, no, you're sorry. Yeah. I thought you mean in terms no. of what your boss wants in a more. Okay, I got you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, very briefly, let's go again briefly because sadly I couldn't find much information. I'm sure there is a wealth of information there because there are talks actually that uh, we get to that in a later section. This is a new frontier for this kind of Af activity. Africa, Africa, Australians, uh, the ABC did a great program, which we discuss later in details. They did a great, uh, they discussed it as a new uh, frontier uh, for uh, these type of activities, a lot of African islands, a lot of African uh, countries and all that. And uh, But the most important and most, uh, uh, again, the most, the case that has garnered most media attention, I, I, I don't like to use that term important, I apologize. Uh, a Kenyan president mounted anti-corruption comeback, his family's secret fortune expanded offshores. So uh, I believe they are called Kenyatta family. So I assume they are a traditional and powerful fam family within Kenya, has ruled one of, the, one of Africa's largest economies for decades. Kenya is a pro relatively speaking prosperous and uh, peaceful country, very beautiful, amazing culture, amazing everything. Uh, but to the Swiss advisors who helped them funnel wealth into tax havens, they were client 13173. And this is an article by Willy, <laughs> William Fitzgibbon uh, on, uh, uh, oh, it's on the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. You see, for, for Africa, for East Asia, I had to go to the, like, it was really difficult to uh, find anything on the major news outlets and all that. But yeah, this guy, again, another case like Emran Khan, somebody who was uh, came to power through anti-corruption, yeah. somebody who's, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, anyway. Same story. Uh, you I know, mean, somebody who fights poverty. Yeah. We get to that more. I, I think on France, we get to a really highlight. I mean, I wanted issue. to read exactly the sentence from the paragraph I read in the beginning. The leaked records revealed that many of the power players who could help bring an end to the offshore system instead benefit from it. So people exactly who have fought against, you know, corruption more broadly, but also, yeah, um, you know, offshore systems. Let me write this down. I want to mention it later. Okay. Sorry about that. Sometimes I need to take notes. Otherwise, my brain just farts. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, again, about Africa, I would love to know more. I would I love to know more about uh, Ethiopia. There is a war going on, so I doubt uh, garner as much attention. But Ethiopia is a country I'm super interested in. South Africa is uh, you know, got that Anglo connection, uh, Egypt, all these, con it's fascinating, all these French connections, uh, there is apparently Morocco comes into play mm -hmm. in a way, but more through France, so that's why I'll leave it for there. But uh, anyway, so shall I move on to, uh, shall I move on to the next? Yeah, yeah? please. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's first uh, talk about Australia because it's again it's a small one. Australia, the ABC uh, uh, is a Australian channel, I believe. They did a great documentary program called uh, Four Corners, in which they discuss in depth Australia's role in these papers. I highly suggest everybody who wants to know names and details and all that check that out because. I mean, I watch it twice and I'm still a bit confused because they really go through details of the mechanisms, the structures and how different people, individuals help to create. It's, it's fascinating. It's not just about people using these tax havens. It's about these advisors, for example, mentioned mm -hmm. about the African president. If, if this video is separate, check out our video about um, Africa, Africa, Pandora Papers, and you know these Swiss advisor, these Australian um, financial experts, these British bankers, all these people helped to restructure these banks and these islands' economies to fit the purpose, uh, uh, to uh, you know, to fit the purpose of basically legal, mostly legal financial tax. Yeah, that's avoidance. a great point. Uh, so. Australia played a very key role in Australian financial institution. And 
individual Australian financial people, some of whom have been, interestingly, have been arrested on charges unrelated to financial crime. So, for example, have been caught on witness tampering and that type of thing. But that has led to them cooperating and revealing number of secrets, which, again, uh, I don't want to waste your time. Watch that video. Uh, whatever I say is uh, yeah, hot air. Um, again, uh, moving to a bit more a smaller scale uh, thing, moving on from Australia, but it's still is staying in the Anglosphere, we go to US. Uh, United States has come under fire because these papers, just like Britain, has revealed uh, US and Britain as to be we get to Britain after the US uh, as sort of a tax haven in itself, as, mm -hmm. as North, sorry, South Dakota or North yeah. Dakota, South Dakota, I believe, has come under a lot of fire. South Dakota is a major, uh, they, uh, is a, a state which gives major benefits to investors, to people who want to, you know, it gives a level of secrecy and protection that many other states don't do. Florida, a lot of these companies that have bought uh, for properties in US and all that these famous people have used companies in Florida and uh, perhaps more not as economically important but more politically potent uh, Delaware Delaware is actually was one of the first state that this thing since 1980s or 70s I believe was uh, experimented on this idea of it becoming a tax haven. And one of the people who was at the forefront of this was Joe Biden. He used to be known as a company man. The, I, I forget the nickname. I've heard it a lot on, I believe, Useful Idiots, among other shows. Uh, but he, he used to be known as AM man, AMC man. There's a company, banking company, I believe. And I believe one of his sons went on to work there or, or his brother. So uh, let me just read this from a, sorry. Uh, I think this is from Mother Jones, if I'm, yes. Uh, Delaware's windfall comes at the expense of other states. Corporations can place their profits in Delaware-based holding companies to avoid paying taxes in the places where they actually operate. Delaware. Delaware LLCs, limited liability corporations, can also be incorporated anonymously via third-party agents, stifling transparency. Setting up a company in Delaware, the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy says, requires less information than signing up for a Liberty Card. So, uh, you know, I believe Liberty Card is like a library card or something, like, you know, it's a, uh, nothing. So, uh, and Delaware is Joe Biden's state, the current mm -hmm. US president. So there may be some political ramifications, although I hugely doubt that. And sorry, I can't find my notes on UK. Yes, now we can move uh, to the UK, I think. Uh, UK, uh, again, right-wing media has been vicious. And in this very case, I am somewhat happy uh, a bit that they're vicious because uh, mostly in the UK, they are attacking Tony Blair and Sh Sherry Blair. Tony Blair, as probably everybody knows, was the former labor leader who uh, was the former prime minister, three times elected uh, labor leader who, uh, there are many speeches of him right now going around on YouTube. I hope we put some videos of some of them uh, fighting against tax avoidance and tax mm -hmm. havens and all that. He, what he has done is not illegal. Um, and uh, but the idea that under his government, n not only nothing has changed people like him. And I'm sure I'm sure this is a guess. I don't know this for a fact, but Peter Mandelson and his cronies will their name and their companies will come up at some point, as the, it always does. Uh, uh, they, they would uh, be, you know, they, they are being uh, I mean, I'm sure, you know, this is not a good look for labor leader for sure. Um, but moving on from labor's only, I don't want to just bash labor, but that's pretty bad. Cons the conservative Party is under, under attack for its donors as well. It's a bit, a bit more, I'm not sure if it's so much about Pandora Papers or the general anti-Russian sentiment mm -hmm. in uh, newspapers. The Conservative Party is facing fresh questions about donations made by a 
by the wife of a former Russian minister. You know, that's why I'm a bit like yeah. Lubov Chernokon is one of the biggest donors to the Tories, giving more than 1.8 million pounds since 2012. Leaked documents, uh, uh, her personal finance comes from her, uh, her husband mostly. And she used to play tennis apparently and go to auctions with Boris Johnson and Theresa May. Uh, so, you know, that's, you know, not a good look again. Uh, but, uh, you know, but again, the main focus in British papers, as I said earlier, is uh, the property issues and all that. But individuals have also been attacked like Tony Blair. But Tony Blair one, I wanted to highlight that specifically because it just shows how pathetic of a human being this mm-hmm. guy is. Like, you know, people are like stealing millions of dollars or, you know, doing deals that, you know, you yeah. sell your soul for a couple of millions. I can't, you know, begrudge you for that. He's getting tax, a stamp tax duty rides off for like 250 pounds. Like, mm. oh, Jesus Christ, you're such a low level thief. You're, uh, you're a crooked like I don't know. It's just he. This even as a thief, he discussed. Yeah. I don't know. I, I hate this man more than. Uh, again, it's like the AOC thing. Although, I although I admit, you know, Tories are far worse whenever in their government than even right wing Labour governments. At least they put more people in education system and all that. But these type of things just grosses you out. Anyway. No, no, hundred so, percent true uh, there. Yeah. Um, but I just had one question for you. Do you have the article? Um, do you have the article there by the Consortium of Journalists about Tony Blair? Yeah, no, yeah, no. In general, like, do you have the article right there? Because there's this map. You see this I map. Have their that's web- this, yeah, I have their website and the Kenyan article. I've been through. Uh, they have but, many different articles. Okay, yeah. There's one article. It's like a main one. I'm on it. And there's a. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no. A, I, I, I got that from Guardian. I think. There's a world map that says where are the 336 politicians in the Pandora Papers from. And like the US and Canada is completely white and Australia and all the other countries are covered. So it's interesting. There hasn't been any, May- like none of the politicians signed illegal in- activities only. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I'm not too sure because, what they mean this chart. Uh, I'm going to get to that in our text because in, in the uh, countries you mentioned, most of these things are are legal. <laughs> mm. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. It, if you can definitely put a picture on the thing. Yeah, I've, send I've it put it for everybody well. else. I don't know how to show it to you. Okay, I mean, on you Telegram, move on. on a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's I didn't know that. That's fascinating. Fascinating. I mean, every, you know, just keep the bias thing always in mind. Yeah. But now so, we get to, oh, so go ahead. Sir. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. Uh, uh, no, I think I probably got your message. No, not yet. Anyway. But, you got um, it now. Yes, I got it. Oh, wow. Oh, it's one of those spectrum thingies. So yeah. Maybe... Yeah, maybe okay. All right. I wish it was a more color based. It's a spectrum thing, so they can get away with more. But anyway, so maybe the handful. But pretty <coughs> much what it's saying is that none of the, in the documents, none of no politicians from the U.S. or U.K. are like um, U.K. is uh, there. U.K. is red. Oh, sorry. U.K. is there. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. U.S. and Canada, Canada and Australia. And I would think uh, yeah, Russia is a big and again, is it? more important to focus on number of politicians or the level of activity because yeah. in Russia for no, example no. I would imagine low level activity is more common but you know what I mean like it's that's very interesting mm-hmm. the thing that's no awesome. no for sure I know what you mean but yeah it's just interesting that there are no politicians there who either got caught I guess in these leaks or that they use these same systems because maybe it's not worth it or yeah or, I mean, if they even have that much money, I mean, yeah, I mean, some members of Congress, I'll, I'll of course, have a lot of money. We talk about Pelosi and her husband and all that, but oh, some don't also. The top, the top yeah, dogs are the, top, yeah, yeah. Uh, the old. Well, yeah. anyway, let's uh, just uh, in terms of country stuff, let's move on to France, because that's that's the highlight, I think, France, because 
the, I mean, that's the highlight okay. because in terms of content, the uh, sorry, France 24 did a fantastic debate. We put a, a, a link below and it was a fantastic debate because I think it, again, like Brianna Joy discussions, it was a genuine, lively discussion. People who agreed on some basic facts and then the discussion mm-hmm. could mo- move forward but let's first focus on topics uh, they focused on the individuals talked about where for uh, dominic strauss khan featured heavily dominic strauss khan was a former socialist finance minister and former possible socialist candidate against sarkozy who was caught in a sexual scandal in a new york uh, hotel some people, I mean, it was, he settled it and it was probably true. There was loads of other allegations, but his, the timing and all of that was seen as Sarkozy's attack on him. He's turned out, it, his case is a weird one. It's not clear if he's done something illegal or not. The journalist who said his work will be published later on during the week said, Yes, from their understanding, while he was a French citizen and not yet of a Moroccan uh, citizenship, he has set up tax haven in a third country and uh, pay, has not paid taxes, on, uh, has not declared money and has not paid taxes. But it's not clear. It may be that he's actually legally has done this. But even he's, again, even if he's done this legally, more so even than Tony Blair. He was a socialist French uh, party member and finance minister. So somebody who is, I suppose, technically supposed to be fighting these type of things. And he, I, I believe he was a former head of IMF, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, that I'm not sure. Or a candidate to be a head of IMF. Anyway. Uh, f- uh, so uh, they also talked about the discussion in uh, that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the discussion in uh, um, uh, France 20 War, which was lovely, was mainly between the uh, journalist and this guy who was uh, uh, this guy who was uh, 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 contributing editor for Court uh, Quartz, Craig Copetas. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. And he was pointing. I think he made a great point, and we discussed. But check out the discussion for yourself. Uh, but that was the main uh, uh, crust of the uh, discussion that, you know, uh, Dominic Strauss-Kahn. Oh, and they discussed the uh, failure of um, Europe as a whole. For example, 84, 87% of GDP of Luxembourg comes from these type of financial activities. <laughs> and Jacques-Claude Vanker, who used to be the president, I believe, I forget, there's so many EU officials, but he was a major figure, major official of EU, uh, you know, it was the Luxembourgian uh, head of state. Uh, I mean, the, uh, they, they showed this video, which I should have talked about earlier, to be honest, in terms of EU, because it covers the whole, of, the, I mean, uh, the kahunas and the <laughs> EU officials is just uh, unbelievable. There was a EU where is it? I, I, I thought I wrote down the exact quote. Oh, yes, I did. EU, EU Commission spokesperson Dan Ferry. This is a quote. EU, in many aspects, has been a flag bearer in fight <laughs> against tax havens. And we already discussed the role of Swiss um, uh, bank tax advisors, British oh, well, bank tax advisors. Oh, he'll say they're advisors. not EU. He'll say they're not EU. <laughs> Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> but Luxembourg right. is EU, I'm pretty sure. Luxembourg, and Monaco, Monaco is EU. Mon- uh, Monaco is Monaco. part of France, so tricky one. But Ireland is part of EU, right? Our, and Ireland, like... yes. Ireland is a big tax haven for corporate. It used to be at least for Amazon. Yeah. Or, anyways, the, the, okay, that one you got me there. No, no. British and there. But the British, but... yeah, <laughs> that one was a bad one. I feel no, bad. no, but it's true though. It's but, I mean, and of course it's bullshit. Way, Mon- I mentioned Monaco, and we just spoke because, about France and uh, yeah. Blair, I, I, the, I wanted to mention Monaco specifically because Russia, who's been criticized, and the European media, as usual, is Putin, Putin people. By the way, uh, so far from what I understand, from what I understand from the Australian documentary, for example, Russian companies have so far have acknowledged that the the 
veracity of the papers, but they say there is no wrongdoing and the companies who have done wrongdoing have not done it in the activities they've done with us. This is not no defense of them. Mm-hmm. I'm just stating their position. And apparently, uh, Vladimir Putin, this was discussed by uh, uh, Craig Kopatis, Mr. Kopatis, that uh, Putin's activity, apparently there is a lot of Putin properties in Monaco and his uh, family and stuff, but none of it is illegal because the tax code, as he mentions in the video, is written by Putin. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> anyway. So, uh, yeah, I think, let me see if there's anything on France. I couldn't find, no, nothing more on France. I mean, to be honest. When, when you're typically uh, yeah. dealing with like Western issues or Western corruption, especially like in the US, like when you talk about campaign financing and different things, thinking too much in terms of legality won't get you far because often a lot of these things aren't illegal uh, a lot of the times. Yeah. I object to that because if I can. But do you get what I mean? mean, But did you get what I mean? No, no, I think I think you I think you're right in a sense that you should oh. always, always keep in your mind that ethical and moral realities are different from legal realities and keep that separate. And you have your morality, but don't think legality, because a lot of people, I think, assume legal uh, code is an extension of moral code or ethical code. It's mm-hmm. not. Yeah, that's what I mean. Different. Yeah, no, 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 no. And I agree. And like you know, just and because something is legal or not illegal doesn't even mean that it's let alone morality, but that it's problematic or that it should change and all that. So I just mean that you know a lot of things that exactly the documenting in these leaks are perhaps technically not legal, uh, technically not illegal, but it doesn't make them more problematic or negatively impactful or whatever it is that. Yes, but issues. but but it does make a big difference in in my view in how you deal with them. I mean, mm-hmm. if you yeah, like, no, you can yeah. take I'm your... not saying that it's irrelevant. I'm just saying to only sure, think sure. about it as legal or not legal. I mean, that's not going to get yeah, far. Perhaps I agree with you hundred percent. No, no. I mean, it's really funny. We agree pretty much always, but I like to <laughs> always point out the <laughs> tiny bit of thing just to highlight it. But um, yeah, if you want, uh, we can take a break or we can uh, move on to the big takes, to be honest, where I like I, the, your point, I think, will be discussed. Up to you. Uh, let's move on. Yeah. Go. Okay. So I think the big, big take, I mentioned there is a big uh, glo- G20 summit coming up, but um, uh, I think... Uh, I think we're going to see, and we discussed this, we're going to do a video about AUKUS, which uh, hopefully everybody checks that out as well. That's going to be mostly me presenting as well, sadly. But I think we're going to, we are seeing the emergence of global, we're going to see an increasing emergence of regional institutions, at least in the short term, to Mm. deal with these. I'm not sure they're going to be successful, uh, but uh, yeah, I think global world is basically, we are seeing increasingly the chaos of the globalized world, whether it's the banking system, whether it's the supply chain, whether it's the medicine, COVID crisis, uh, uh, biological crisis, all of that we are increasingly, uh, whether in the first world, whether in the uh, middle, top middle mm-hmm. class, at least not the super wealthy, we are feeling the chaos of the global world. I don't know what's your... No, no, very this interesting. The, um, very interesting. personal view. Very interesting take because you kind of connected it to a lot of these, I guess, these kind of issues that have related with prices going up for like gas and there being shortages. Problem and a lot supply. Of, yeah, a lot of them have to do with this coming from there and this being sent there and i guess the connectivity that's coming up with the globalization we're a globalized world and although it's not new but you pointed this problem out at a at a very nice time because i mean you see these leaks right now with the financial side of it and the energy crisis going on and of course oh, sure. all kinds of manufacturing shortages no very very interesting point Do you have mean, more to say about this the only thing is say uh, nothing it's just that the whole yeah 
the globalization or international factor in my eye, because we are covering these, just came common throughout all these issues. And I'm reading Age of Extremes, not reading, listening <clears throat> to Age of Extremes by uh, Eric Hobsbawm. And he first, the beginning of the book is about the setup and all that. And it does, there are very big similarities. So maybe that's affecting the outlook somewhat. But that was one. Uh, second one I wanted to talk about was the, um, oh yeah, the, the thing you mentioned about the morality and ethics. I think, okay, when you separate between morality and, uh, sorry, illegality and morality and all that, right? So now people are like, for example, the majority of the coverage is focused on Tony Blair or whoever, but Tony Blair is a nobody now. Mm -hmm. majority of focus or these corporations or these shell companies or that individual in Australia, I think the focus should be on the systematic change and on the people who are in power right now. And, uh, no. you know, instead of, uh, because uh, to be honest, I've done, a, I've taken advantages in my youth, especially of a lot of things that were probably illegal but somewhat immoral. And, you know, it's something that people do. We should try, focus should be on fixing the legal systems globally or internally as well, by the way. I mean, uh, this idea of that, by the way, uh, internally that we are, we can't do anything internally. It's a globalized world. Uh, America, for example, I, I've had American friends, that, like my dad's friends were old and all that. They were, even if you work in, goddamn japan or many countries yeah, unless you work in venezuela or iran they come and get their taxes you know so it's it's not uh, if you're not super rich obviously yeah. ha has not set up a shell company through the three different intermediaries <laughs> and all yeah so like a normal person a, who gets a, a nice job yeah. overseas you mean a small business sets yeah. up a small business in let's say a normal country that has yeah. normal relations with the u.s so i think uh, focus should be there not so much on individuals and all that and although at the same time i think individuals should be held accountable i'm not one of those people who says oh you know uh, i'll talk about that in our online work probably later on that individuals should be held accountable for sure but the legal morality doesn't matter you know morality yeah. ethics and all that is an individual thing it doesn't matter you know and mm. in many ways i would defend even some of these actions because if you live in a country where you know if you leave the power the next guy is gonna murder you and your whole family you do need a stash mm. in a third world country mm -hmm. to run away because that's how it is that's the game you played i mean i wouldn't play that game but if yeah, you yeah. get into that game that's so you know so that's yeah. why morality is irrelevant yeah, I'd just like to make two points, actually. And I wasn't even only talking about the morality when I mentioned the legality. I just no, mentioned that whether you, it it's, was, yeah, yeah, I right. just mentioned, you know, whether it's legal or not, maybe you should make new laws about it or something. But yeah, an important, interesting yeah. point to, to, you know, concentrating on the solutions. <clears throat> And they don't necessarily always have to be global solutions, although we just point out that's a global issue. Each country can for itself. And you pointed out a decent example. So, yeah, I think people from the UK, for example, if they go and work somewhere else, they don't have to pay taxes to their own country. But Americans have to. And yeah, for sure, maybe you'll find ways to go around that, too. But I mean, you have to try your best. Of course, more loopholes will be created and people will try to go around. So, I mean, if you don't try, you won't be able to. I think, I think with the UK and a lot of other countries, also you do have they just don't have the power that u.s has just, <laughs> and, you know and I, sorry, I think and, i think and that's really an example that's really about small scale and normal people it's not even about this issue but really it's just like your example points out that one country tries something different than a different country so there are different things that you can impose in your country if if you would like to combat such an issue but that's if you'd like yeah, to combat enough. such an issue as you pointed you out have the power <laughs> yeah yeah and um yeah i would uh, uh yeah and can i add one I, more thing actually sorry sure, so sure. no i just have these, one more thing that's and these leagues had to do a lot with individuals i don't know how much it has to do with corporations but i remember a few months ago at the g20 most of the g20 countries had agreed to a 10 percent global tax 
no matter where. So I wouldn't be surprised if these talks reemerge again. Yeah, I think they're actually scheduled to reemerge during the next G20 meeting. Exactly. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be one of the... It, I, I, from what I understood, it's, supposed, it's a set topic of discussion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's already agreed by the big countries. And yeah, it, w- it would assure that there's a 10% tax line. What do you mean? It's oh, uh, the flat oh, one, the original yes, tax. Yeah, I believe all G20 countries have agreed to. I mean, I don't know if it will become law or. I, I mean, I don't even know how you implement that at a international level. But yeah, it, the plan uh, is to uh, keep m- most com- corporations above a certain size to pay ten percent at the very least. And if the country in which they're in, they decide to have a lower tax which rate, is, then is the difference is taxed. Them. Yeah, and then the difference is taxed and sent to the country where the corporation is actually based in. So it'll be interesting if it comes into play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, maybe maybe it was yeah time to influence that mm-hmm. for sure. Oh, by the way, uh, I forgot to mention that in Czech Republic, there is an election coming up and the Czech prime minister mm-hmm. who was seen at, in polls as being set up to be reelected is getting heavily affected. Sorry to mention that at the, that should have been mentioned in our European section. Yeah. But yeah, so that's another mm-hmm. specific ramification of the thing. Yeah. So uh, just to a couple of things to finish off, I would like to give Ken, a big, a big credits to DW, Indian Express, for apparently they contributed to International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, ABC uh, four corners fantastic documentary i couldn't believe they must have been working on it for a long time oh for sure i mean they had a full documentary ready to go on the day so they must yeah, have I was, been i mean for two yeah, years 150 been a to yeah one of the 150 I I, organizations they must have been i mean um as i mentioned mr craig copetas uh well very well done analysis and very cogent analysis and by the way some people may he was very he kept saying that you know i agree with your sentiment but you guys are naive you guys don't understand legally nothing is going to happen and mm. people more importantly people don't care the idea that people care about this is i don't know i don't anyway um and nicolas uh, Shakson, I, um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, Tax Justice, from Tax Justice Network. He appeared on France 20 World, gave a very great analysis of the structural way it works in UK. So full credits there. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, uh, I just wanted to give credits there. I also wanted to give something that is, you can, people can switch off. That has nothing to do with anything anymore. But Pandora's box uh, originally, Pandora's box is a Greek thing, yeah. which, you know, they say that um, when it opened up, uh, it's all the evil and all the uh, all the uh, badness basically mm-hmm. uh, came out um, uh, in uh, fr- from it, basically. Uh, and I believe it was originally a was. It was not a box. It's a mistranslation. It was a vase or a pot, clay pot. Okay. That they would, I believe they would in ancient times, you know, they would put uh, whenever, what do you call them? Pickles. They wanted to make pickles. They would put those things in there, put vinegar or uh, salt water, and they would bury it. And then they open it up. Uh, And, you know, but I liked how uh, it was framed as Pandora's box because Pandora is, and this box is an evil thing, but I don't think, you know, these transparency coming out is necessarily, a, you know, evil getting out of I the world. See. But that was interesting. But in English, isn't like the saying has <clears throat> also turned into like opening like yes, it has. a Pandora's kind of box of, of like, it just kind of means you open this box and a lot of things come out of it. So I guess they're referring well, it, to, you know, no, you no. open this stack of leaks and there's no, all no, of this going caused, on coming out of it. It doesn't mean a lot of things comes out. It means a lot of trouble comes out of it. Yeah. And yes, that's true. But for whom? Yeah. You know, that's the question. That, that's, okay. It was interesting. Again, yeah. I know there is no conspiracy or anything. I just <laughs> linguistically, I was fascinated by that. So I, if you are a Freudian, <sighs> you could read into this shit. 
but nice nice do you have anything else to add if not i have one thing to say no no uh, thank you for if sorry about the incomplete information no no of course it's our first look that was good to to point out i wanted to say that maybe all of this has already been fixed because they're working on these papers for two years on this on this expose so these oh, yeah, leaks probably. are from two years ago so for all we That's know probably true it's uh, <laughs> everything it's been all taken fixed care of. placed Yeah. No, I, and I would say that I don't think they're half as important as the journalists. That's why I like the Craig guy. Like he, the guy, they pretend they discovered this. Everybody knew this. All it's like, it's like everybody knows OJ killed his wife and uh, the guy, the guy or two guys. Anyways, everybody knows that. Just because you find a picture or video of him doing the act does not add anything substantive. To the argument, it's good. It's good. I think it's. I love as somebody who's interested in economics. I'm interested in to seeing how it works. But don't pretend people are gonna care and there's gonna be riots and nobody. Not to that care. extent. People or it's won't any different care from to that extent. But even if you know something, it's always good when there's evidence because sooner or later, if you don't have concrete evidence, people will be like, "Yeah, do we really know that though? And eh, 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 is it really?" You have know. evidence. They can say people do that. so. Yeah, no, that's true, and I'm not. But I'm just I saying mean, it's not completely last, useless. If not, most of the information no, no, that say, comes uh, out, mm. we know always. Like most of the things that always come out, pe- people often know about them, but they're just new layers or just I, hard evidence and new levels I, of analysis again, I that agree. come. It's. I personally enjoy it, but I would say since 1990s, especially onwards, and internet. Clearly, it has been proven evidence plays very little to no role in human education or human knowledge. So I, I enjoy it personally, yeah. but I don't pretend it has any socio, so, social effects. Yeah, I think it could have some, but, you know, no, none of these effects, like, you know, things don't change in one go. So like something, the outcome of something can just become a little bit different because of a new information sure. or something that changes. But I mean, the world's I problems think, will never get solved. I mean, if we could have this channel prices, for another thousand years, no, we will no, always have issues, you know, to talk about because nothing will get, the world won't get fixed. It, it's just, it just continues. No, no, I, no, I just mean that these type of things, people don't give a shit about that. It's not even electorally or socially important. Bread prices price of i don't know raw materials that thing matters you know not this nobody care everybody mm. knows what you who in france do you think they didn't know dominic strauss yeah. was corrupt no, this was they, a, this they was matter a guy more. who used to yeah yeah for sure uh, yeah, no, no no for yeah. sure those other examples you gave matter m- much more or tony blair yeah like if you think tony blair is a not corrupt i'm sorry i have a bridge to sell you yeah. yeah but i mean it could it could have some conse- individual consequences for some people for some politicians in some context for sure yes, that could happen yes. but May- yeah you're Emron 100% Hunt. yeah it is perhaps not the biggest story i would say of the year like for sure oh no no i meant i didn't mean it in that way even i don't i don't compare it to, i just meant in a so, social effect type of mm-hmm. thing you know what i mean like john the watch the france 24 debate like so i find journalists and activists tend to over exaggerate some oh, things that's, that's all i meant that's all i meant yeah yeah a lot do definitely but okay all right on that note <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching. Please like and subscribe. More importantly, leave your comments, questions, criticisms down below, and we'll make sure to get to them. But yeah, if not, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in our next video. Thank you.